If you were haunted by a killer clown that was out for blood, what would you do? This deranged freak has been waiting to murder you for years, and now he's back with a vengeance. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the killer clown in stitches. These kids have no idea they're about to murder someone. They've all gathered to celebrate Tommy's 10th birthday when they hear this car come driving down the road and head outside, excitedly cheering the arrival of Stitches the birthday clown. Driving up to the house, the car comes to a stop and a man gets out. Tommy's mother scolds him for showing up late, but the clown doesn't care and demands cash up front, but this will be the last paid gig of his life. After taking her money, the clown starts performing for the kids inside the house, but the children aren't amused. Frustrated, he asks for the birthday boy and everyone points towards Tommy here. The clown walks towards him and reaches out to pull a coin, giving it to the boy as a gift. That's when he brings out the hat of mystery, showing everyone an empty hat, before this kid pours a drink into it, ruining the trick. Next, he pumps up a balloon and asks the kids what animal they want to see. This kid asks for a stegosaurus, but Stitches tells him that he can only manage to make a dog. They complain at the clown as he tries his best to make something resembling a dinosaur, but it's clear these kids are determined to give the man a hard time. Then someone pops his balloon while Stitches tries to salvage his clown act. They watch as he fails to juggle, deciding to bring out a skeleton as a mine. This nerdy kid throws a scoop of ice cream at the puppet and knocks it out of his hands. He moves on to juggling as one of the children ties his shoelaces together, but that's when Tommy here throws a soccer ball at the clown, making him lose his balance. With no stability, he stumbles into the kitchen and falls into the dishwasher. Worried, the kids slowly walk over to check on the man when suddenly he gets back up and turns around to reveal a kitchen knife has pierced through his face. Terrified, the party guests run off and leave Tommy to face the man alone. Stitches here removes the knife from his head and tries to stab the kid, but that's when he trips on a puddle of blood. The blade goes flying up into the air until it lands back in his face, killing him instantly. It's a traumatizing experience, and just a few days later, Tommy looks through a pair of binoculars to see the funeral service for the clown. Feeling guilty, he picks up the man's toy flower and leaves his house. He arrives at a cemetery and puts the toy down on Stitch's grave, but that's when he sees a group of clowns on top of the hill. He decides to follow them to see what's going on and enters this old tower, where he watches them perform a pagan ritual to their clown god. The cultists recite a phrase and finish their ceremony, when suddenly Tommy is pulled out of hiding by one of the clowns. Their leader warns him that a clown can't rest in peace if they fail to finish a party, and Stitches will be coming back to brutally take his revenge on all seven kids. Okay, this is not good. Not only has a clown died at this kid's birthday party, but now we've just learned the clown's soul won't rest until he's come back to finish the job. His balloon animals were bad enough the first time around, and nobody in their right mind would want to watch the sequel to his act, especially if he's coming back from the dead. It's terrifying, and since Tommy here is only a kid, he doesn't know what to do next. But if it were me, I would try to use the satanic clown cult to find a way to stop Stitches from coming back as the living dead altogether. Otherwise, I'll have to live my entire life worried that every birthday party will be my last. During the clown ritual in the graveyard, it sounds like the clowns are speaking in Latin. This actually makes sense because the origin of clowns dates as far back to ancient Rome, who developed theatrical caricatures that represented the poor labor class. In fact, the word clown in the English language originally meant boar or peasant. At this point, I would try to remember and write down as many phrases as possible so I could do research later. I might be able to find an ancient book or literature on the internet that will lead me to more clown rituals that will help lay Stitch's soul to rest. Unfortunately, Tommy comes unprepared, which means that he'll have to track down information on the clown cult another way. Now in reality, the average clown doesn't sign his soul away to a clown cult, so I wouldn't be able to just ask around about Stitch's clown friends without drawing a lot of suspicion. But at Stitch's funeral, there were three women that attended, which means that Stitch's here had several girlfriends that could give me background on his life. To find them, I would first try to find the neighborhood where Stitch's lived and hung out. I would do this by getting more info from Tom's mom, but even if his phone number isn't enough to find out more about him, we know from the cross placed above Stitch's burial site that his real name was Richard Grindle. The newspaper article covering the clown's death also states that the location of the party was in Enniscary, Ireland, and Enniscary only has a population of 1,889 people people as of 2016, which means that it shouldn't be too hard to track these girls down just by using Richard's full name. I would do this by going to the local grocery store or pub to see if anyone had seen Richard before and with who. A man that lived and worked in clown paint probably stuck out like a sore thumb, so learning who his companions were shouldn't be too hard. Once I find one of these ladies, I would ask them to lead me to where he lived so I can search through his things. This would hopefully give me more background on how to find the clown cult members. It's fair to think that the kid is too young to be doing any of this, but at this point, the entire town would know that the clown died at this kid's birthday party and that he's experiencing severe trauma from the experience. 
As horrifying as it would be, this gives us a lot of leeway to make ridiculous requests, and the locals would be much more accommodating because of it. We could simply say that we wanted to keep his clown nose to help us process the trauma, and it might lead us to the rest of his possessions so we can find out more. Now, confronting a clown cult seems like a bad idea, but when Tommy comes head to head with the clowns in the graveyard, they don't hurt him because they say he's not their charge, so I wouldn't be in any danger. Based on the clown's ritual after Stitch's death, it also looks like their supernatural power comes from praying to a clown like God, and although this seems silly, throughout tons of ancient mythology, there have been gesture-like gods and tricksters that humans used to pray to and offer sacrifices in return for favors. In Greek mythology, there was Hermes, who is mischievous and clever, and often referred to as the god of thieves. In Norse mythology, Loki, the god of mischief, was a shapeshifter whose allegiance would change from time to time. All it will take is finding out which god the clowns are praying to and providing the appropriate sacrifice according to their traditions and beliefs. Six years later, Tommy wakes up for school and heads downstairs. He walks out to the kitchen helping his mother out with breakfast, but as they sit down to eat, the kid hallucinates that food on his plate looks like a clown's head. He's still traumatized by what happened six years ago, and his mother questions if there's anything wrong. Tommy lies, saying that he's upset she won't be around for his birthday, but his mother insists that she has urgent work on that day. She suggests that the teen call his friends over while Tommy refuses to eat his food, taking his anti-anxiety medication to school. His friend Bulger arrives at the same time while Vinny here smokes a cigarette outside and tries to pick up girls. Richie and Kate here get called out while walking into the school building. Tommy goes to his locker, seeing this tall student hitting on Kate, his old childhood friend. He hides behind the locker door and watches as she scolds her boyfriend for not calling her. They walk away and just as he shuts the door, this blonde girl Sarah asks Tommy for her homework. That's when her boyfriend Paul sneaks up from behind and kneels down. The girl pretends to flirt with Tommy before pushing him over the other kid's back. The bullies tease him while he's down and walk off. In class, the students are given a test, while the boys notice a good-looking girl in their classroom. Tommy interrupts his friend during the test to ask if he's free on Saturday, inviting him to watch movies and drink beer. Hearing this, Vinny asks him to invite the other boys, but Tommy refuses to host a party, terrified that if he does, Stitches will return. That's when the others overhear him and ask about their plans. The anxious kid insists that there isn't a party going on, when suddenly, he hallucinates their teacher as the clown telling them to quiet down. That's when he reaches down and grabs his friend by the seat of his pants. Suddenly, the teacher tells Tommy that his time has come, and he snaps back to reality. The man tells him that the exam is over, and it's time to hand in their papers for marking. In the sports hall, the students get ready for a grueling session of physical exercise. The teacher insults each and every student, trying to get them motivated to play. Meanwhile, Tommy's friends wonder why he isn't hosting a party with his gigantic free house. Vinny walks over to their other friend, suggesting they host a surprise party for the anxious kid, and Richie thinks it's a bad idea. Later, Vinny approaches his anxious friend and insists they host the party. Kate and Dan are about to break up so he can slide right in if she shows up. Before he can speak, he demands Tommy think about it before the ball comes his way, and he misses the hoop by a mile. That night, the anxious kid climbs to his treehouse and peeks through his telescope to make sure nothing strange has happened in the cemetery. He's terrified that hosting the party will resurrect the clown, reminded by the coin from his 10th birthday, and looks through his telescope again to see Kate arguing with her boyfriend on the phone. The next morning at school, he invites his friends to his house on Saturday for the party of a lifetime. Walking out of the room, he spots Kate being scolded by a teacher for wearing red boots to school. She laughs at his face, and the man gives her after-school detention for not taking him seriously. He runs off to punish another student, while Tommy stops her to ask if she's free on Saturday. Kate tells him that she might be going out that day with a few of her girlfriends, but Tommy asks her to bring them along. Later in the hallway, the boys confront him about the house party, mentioning that he's bringing all of his boys to come crash it. The girl pretends to make out with him, pushing the anxious kid, and telling him that they'll be there on Saturday whether he likes it or not. Outside, Vinny tells him that 32 people have already been invited, and this is going to be the biggest party they've ever attended. But no one realized that this will be the biggest mistake of his life. Okay, Tommy here knows that he's cursed to have a dead clown come back from the grave to seek vengeance after dying a death by knife to the face. He's already starting to see visions of Stitches coming back to kill his friends, and it looks like this party is going to happen whether he likes it or not. If it were me, I would prepare myself for Stitch's inevitable arrival and try to fight back against him when he comes to my party. Vinny here is Tom's best friend, and aside from him and Kate, it doesn't look like Tommy has a great relationship with any of the other kids that attended his 10-year-old birthday party, which means he really only has to worry about whether they make it out alive or not. 
If you think about it, having everyone come to his house and using the other students as bait is actually a great way to get rid of the curse before Tommy has to go to college where he will probably have to go to plenty more parties. Before the party begins, I would put a tracker on Vinny and Kate or turn their cell phone location services on so I'm able to keep in contact with them at all times. That way, I can figure out where they are in the house as I try to trap and keep Stitches away from them. Once the party has started, Stitches will show up and since Tommy is the birthday boy, he will be looking for him. At Tom's first birthday party, Stitches performed for everyone, but asked who the birthday boy was in order to perform a coin trick. When Stitches arrives, I would show him the coin to let him know it's me, and lead him out to the graveyard mausoleum where the clown cults congregate. Instead of taking on Stitches right there and then, I would face off with him in the graveyard to lead him away from the others, but also to get rid of Stitches and the clown cult's weird clown eggs all in one shot. When the boy wandered into the crypt to spy on the clown cult, he saw them with a bunch of strange eggs, and since this is clearly a religious ceremony, there's no question that these eggs have some kind of spiritual significance to them. If they've already threatened that he'll come back and are this confident about it, then these eggs might somehow be important to Stitch's immortality. And making sure he or any of the other clowns never come back again is my best bet at ever having a social life again. Before the party starts, I would set up explosive devices in the mausoleum to destroy it and Stitches at the same time. Getting an explosive device would be hard, but improvised ones can be created with combustible materials when combined with even basic household cleaning solutions. There's also only one entrance to the mausoleum, so I would have to create a secret second way out of it before the party even started. The mausoleum is old and made of stone, and has a few windows that I can widen so I can fit through it on the other side. Once I have Stitches in the mausoleum and away from Vinny and Kate, I would set off the explosive, sending Stitches straight back to where he came from. On his birthday, Tommy cleans the house before hearing a knock on the door. His friends surprise him having come early to get the place prepared and walk inside with all of the essentials. After they get done setting things up around the house, the boys make a toast with the first drinks of the night, and later, the rest of the party arrives. It's absolutely massive, and all of these underage kids are having the time with their life. Tommy comments to his friends on the amount of people who showed up, and that's when Vinny notices the pretty girl Mary walking in. He makes it clear to the others he's going to get lucky with her tonight, but then their friend interrupts to take a group photo and comments that Tommy needs to chill out. Meanwhile in the cemetery, Stitches the Clown rises from his grave, ready to crash Tommy's birthday party. His soul can't rest until he's finished his act and heads to the kid's house for the performance of a lifetime. The boys watch as some of the girls play pool in skimpy dresses while Tommy rambles on about video games. Vinny hands him a cookie and the birthday boy takes it, munching on the treat, but when he asks for it back, the kid tells him he ate the whole thing. The boys laugh and reveal that he's just ate the equivalent of 40 joints, making it clear that soon he's going to be completely out of his mind. Later, Vinny spots Kate arriving at the party and notices Tommy is completely lost in space. He goes over to ask if he's alright, mentioning that his crush just came in. Kate walks over to say hi, and Vinny leaves him alone. She tells him that the party is absolutely packed, but instantly notices that Tommy is stoned. He pretends not to be and thanks her for coming. Spilling her drink on the floor, she tells him that he just missed the kid by an inch. Misunderstanding, Tommy admits that he missed her too, now realizing that he just made the cringiest mistake of his life. The party rages on through the night with everyone getting ridiculously drunk. The boys watch as Mary starts dancing with her friend, and Vinny goes over to her to make his move on the girl with Richie acting as his wingman. In another room, Tommy continues talking with his crush, but that's when Kate's boyfriend interrupts them. He suggests that Tommy go hang out with his friends, but she insists that he stay and keep talking. Suddenly, the birthday boy turns his head and spots a clown running towards him with a knife. Terrified, the kid freaks out and runs off, now realizing that it's one of the bullies in a costume. His friends run over to make sure he's alright, scolding the kid for making a terrible prank. That's when a fight breaks out, and the partygoers run inside to see what's going on, now realizing that a real killer clown is about to cause havoc. Okay, all of the teenagers have taken over, and Tommy has completely lost control of the situation. A killer clown is going to show up at any minute, and all of Tommy's friends are going to regret not having taken Stitches seriously. At this point, the only thing Tommy can do is try to protect himself and his friends by using supernatural protective tools to guard them from the crazy killer undead clown. It's tough to know how to approach protecting the house from Stitches, because we know that he's a supernatural being, but we don't know what kind. If it were me, I would look to common mythology and folklore to try to figure out what sort of supernatural being Stitches is and find the right spell or item to protect the house and everyone in it. 
garlic wards off vampires, and silver bullets kill werewolves. But what kills a murderous clown that's risen from the dead? At his core, even though he's a clown, Stitches can be classified as a demon. Demons are commonly defined as malevolent supernatural entities and have shown up in almost every religion and every society since the Paleolithic period. Since that time, it's also been extremely common for people that believe in these mythologies and religions to wear or place protective symbols to ward off these demons. Since the mythology about demons is spread far and wide, choosing which one would be accurate in this situation is nearly impossible to pin down with total accuracy. But since the clown cult is in Ireland, it's best to assume that the demon has some link to Gaelic mythology. There are also just so happens to be a trickster demon in Gaelic mythology that shows up to scare children into good behavior called the Bodok that could be seen as an early version of a demon like Stitches. For this reason, to help protect Tommy and his friends, he should place the Celtic shield knot all over his house. The shield knot is an ancient Celtic symbol of protection that was used for everything from protecting ill people from death to warding off evil spirits. It was even rumored that the shield knot would protect warriors during battle and was placed on their armor. The knot itself usually has four clear corners and has no beginning or end. Drawing different versions of the knot itself isn't impossible and should be easy enough for Tommy to pull off in time to ward off stitches. Since he doesn't have that much time, Tommy should use any household objects like sharpies or in the best case scenario, spray paint to draw them all over the house and on he and his friend's clothing to keep stitches away. It's important to take protective measures like this because it requires very little effort and if it works, the upside is huge. However, if we discover that these Celtic knots aren't enough to protect us, then we're going to need a plan B for when things start to get violent. Killing a supernatural creature that's risen from the dead is not an easy thing to do, but if we're thinking outside of the box, there might be one workaround here. Instead of focusing on killing him, I would target his limbs. If the man can't walk or swing his arms, then he's going to be a lot less threatening. And even if his limbs were able to move on their own, we could simply lock them up in separate rooms so they can't cause any more damage. Successfully attacking a demon clown still isn't an easy thing to do, but if we have a good strategy, we'll all have a much better chance of surviving. Bulger argues with the bully clown and his girlfriend, demanding they leave the party now. Embarrassed, Tommy here storms out of the house, and Kate chases after him, following the kid to the treehouse. The girl climbs up to make sure that he's alright, and remembers that they used to come up here when they were kids, looking through the telescope before noticing that it's pointed at her house. Tommy admits that he was looking at the graveyard late at night, and spotted the girl's lights on. He notices that she was looking mad while talking on the phone, but Kate here questions why he was looking at the graveyard. He explained what happened on the night of Stitch's funeral, and reveals that he saw a clown ritual happening in the crypt. The kid feels like a freak for saying any of this, but Kate comforts him by mentioning that everyone who was at that party turned out weird. Tommy shows her the research that he's been doing ever since to prove that what he saw at the tower was real. He reveals that clowns have been around for centuries, but he never found anything that could prove he wasn't crazy. Looking at this picture, Tommy explains that clowns had to paint their face on an egg in a ritual called the Spirit of Singulara, and he's got no idea this information will save his life. Meanwhile, the fake clown rushes into the toilet, desperate to relieve himself, and fails to find the zipper for his costume, wetting himself straight through his giant shoes, with no idea that Stitches has been watching. The bully wraps the top half of his costume around himself and walks out into the hallway, when he hears someone call his name, but finds no one there. Stepping outside, he walks over to the railing and wrings out the urine from his underwear. He dries his hands, but suddenly, the real clown Stitches calls out to him. He walks over to the kid and reaches out, before ripping his ear off. The bully tries to fight back, but his arm is brutal ripped off by the killer clown. Stitches teases him and tells the boy that he's about to witness a bloodbath. Hearing the kid plead for him to stop, Stitches sticks his entire arm into his mouth, pulling out a bunny from inside of him. That's when he kicks the kid's head off and kills him instantly, making that one victim down with six more to go. Kate walks back to the house, noticing the bully sitting by Tommy's front door. She scolds the girl for her silly prank, while Sarah continues to tease the anxious kid for hiding in his treehouse, mentioning that Kate here has been hanging around too many guides. Furious, the girl headbutts the bully and walks walks back into the house. Meanwhile, in the storage room, the killer clown finds Bulger eating a can of beans by himself. Thinking that it's his friend, the kid calls him out, but realizes that this isn't the bully in a costume. The clown rushes at him, grabbing the boy from behind, and brutally cuts his head with a can opener. The man rips the skin off his scalp and tears it open. He then scoops part of the boy's brain from his head and pours it into a plastic tub, making that two victims down with five more to go. The clown walks out of the pantry and sneaks up the staircase to ambush his next victim. Vinny here continues flirting with the blonde girl while she cries about how she used to be fat. The others walk up to the mask what's going on, with the guy mentioning that he has magical powers that can make her aroused with only his mind. Vinny slowly moves his hands closer to the girl, before touching her and running up the staircase, with Mary chasing after him. In the treehouse, Tommy watches from his telescope as the pair get ready for a night of lovemaking, but suddenly spots the killer clown waving at him. 
Meanwhile, the bully's girlfriend walks into the attic, thinking Paul is up here, and discovers too late that it's a different person. She's pushed onto the bed, and the clown is about to stab the girl with an umbrella, but Sarah sticks her heel into Stitch's neck. It doesn't kill him, and Stitches pulls it out to reveal that his skin has instantly regenerated. The bully's girlfriend rolls off the bed and runs away, but it's too late. Stitches throws his killer umbrella straight through her head, making that three victims down with four more to go. Okay, Stitches here has come back with a vengeance. Not only is he killing kids left and right, but he also appears to regenerate when he's harmed or injured. This makes physically harming him very difficult, especially since he bounces back so quickly. The one good thing about this situation is that Stitches has come back as a physical entity, and although he has the supernatural strength to rip people's ears off and grow back skin, he has a physical body and walks around as he moves from place to place. This means that he can be trapped even if he can't be outright killed. If it were me, I would attempt to capture Stitches and dismember him until I'm able to figure out a way to kill him. At this point, I would have to convince my friends that something supernatural is happening, and because there are three dead bodies strewn across the house, it would be crazy for the other students in the school to want to stay there or for my friends not to believe me. I would try to get everyone out of the house immediately and only keep people there that believe me and want to help capture Stitches. Calling the police would be an initial instinct when someone has been killed, but it wouldn't make any sense in the situation because they wouldn't be able to kill or protect me from Stitches either. By banding together with Kate and Vinny, one of us can use her themselves as bait to lure him into a bedroom, while the other two chop him limb from limb. Tommy probably doesn't have a net just lying around, so once Stitches follows Kate or Vinny into a bedroom, he will have to improvise with something like a sheet or comforter and throw it over Stitches while he is caught off guard. Tommy, Kate, and Vinny would then have to act quickly and use the sharpest objects in the house to rip Stitches up into small enough pieces that he can't harm us anymore. The most ideal tool would be a chainsaw from somewhere in the garage, but again it's probably unlikely Tommy has this laying around. However, we do know that there are already kitchen knives that have killed him before. I would first try to chop off his arms and decapitate him, and put them in separate bags and rooms to keep them from each other so they cannot relatch into Stitch's torso. Destroying Stitch's head by lighting it on fire or putting it in a blender seems like the most logical way to completely destroy him and keep him from coming back to life for as long as possible. The goal here is to pulverize and damage him even though I know he will regenerate, so Tommy can buy himself more time to realize he needs to go to the mausoleum and break Stitch's clown egg before any more kids can be killed. Knowing that the clown won't stop until they're all dead, Tommy rushes back to his house to alert the partygoers that they need to leave now or else. The boys don't believe a word he's saying and make fun of the anxious kid. Frustrated, he throws a rock at the bedroom window where Vinny is occupied, and when his friend pops his head out, warns him that the house isn't safe to be inside. The boy insists that he'll be out in five minutes and heads back to bed. In the house, Tommy rushes over to his crush, demanding that they leave now. Kate tells him the bully is only wearing a costume, while her boyfriend pushes him away. That's when he decides to turn off the music, making an announcement that a killer is currently inside the building. Tommy questions if anyone has seen his close friends, but no one cares, and the party rages on. Richie here walks outside to smoke a cigarette, but this is going Going to be his biggest mistake. The kid is pulled over by Stitches. He turns around to see the killer clown holding a knife, slashing his stomach open while the kid screams in extreme pain. Suddenly, he pulls Richie's intestines from outside his body and slashes a piece off of him. He blows the organs up and ties it into a dog-shaped balloon. He takes a photo with the scared kid while he tries to run off, falling over out of exhaustion. The boy gets up and Stitches pierces his head with an air pump and slowly puffs Richie's head like a balloon. Suddenly, the kid's head pops open into a bloody mess, making that four victims down with three more to go. Okay, this demon is no fun at all, and nobody believes that there's a murderer demon on the loose. These kids are desperate to party and are going to pay for it with their lives. Several students have just died, and nobody except for Tommy even cares or is questioning whether they should leave or not. At this point, I would have to get the police involved to help get rid of everyone. Even though they can't help us or do anything in terms of killing Stitches, the police can disrupt the party and make everybody go home. Nothing that Tommy is doing is working to get rid of his classmates, and he has to rely on his last resort here to stop any more kids from dying. Stitches is there at the house, and even though luring the clown to his house with his party might have been a good idea to begin with, this was only under the circumstances that Tommy would be more prepared to take on the clown and kill him. In this scenario, though, Tommy hasn't done anything to further his research about Stitches outside of looking up clowns, and he hasn't figured out the correct way to get rid of the demon. He also hasn't bothered to take the time booby-trapping his house, so that if he finds the clown approaching, he would be able to home alone the shit out of him before anyone else needs to die. That means that he'll have to use the limited knowledge he has about Stitches to try to outwit him, and it's possible that Tommy could defeat Stitches on a technicality. One of the few things that Tommy knows about Stitches is that he has to come back from the dead to finish off the party so he can rest in peace. However, if there isn't a party for him to perform at, then there's no telling what will happen to him. The kids will leave regardless of what Tommy says, so if he calls in a noise complaint to his own house, everyone will have to leave and return to their own homes when the police arrive since they're underage drinking. Technically, if the party 
party ends and Stitches isn't able to finish it, then he will have to leave and return again when another party is thrown. Forcing Stitches to leave because there's no party anymore would then give Tommy more time to sit back and prepare for when the clown returns. The thing that's different this time is that several students have also died at this party, so Tommy will hopefully be able to get more of his friends to believe his story and help him prepare for the return. If Stitches doesn't leave and the party is disbanded, then at the very least there are less kids for him to injure or harm as Tommy tries to take him on with one or two of his other classmates. Grabbing a large knife, Tommy slowly heads upstairs to go see where his friends are. Knocking on Vinny's door, the anxious kid tells him that they need to leave because the killer clown is back for vengeance and he saw it upstairs. The friend reluctantly goes to check out the attic while his girl walks out the room. That's when he rushes back down terrified and tells Tommy that they need to leave. He heads back to the room to get his clothes, but suddenly Stitches appears from behind, throwing an extendable arm at his face. He knocks the kid out and gets out of bed, when suddenly Tommy runs towards the clown and stabs his back. Vinny throws a blanket over the killer while they stomp on his head. They run out of the room with the clown getting up without a scratch. Downstairs, Tommy tells him that he needs to get his crush out of here before they leave. The boys run through the house while avoiding Stitch's shadow. The killer clown follows them through the room as they hide in a closet and peek through the door. Tommy insists that they leave, but his friend here is terrified. He manages to convince him that the clown won't attack them as long as they can reach a crowd of people. Walking outside, Kate's boyfriend stops him and questions where the hell he's going. Tommy punches the kid while he runs downstairs to save the others. Richie's hookup walks outside to see the boy's body completely blown apart. She screams and the other kids open up the curtain to see Stitches standing outside. That's when he runs towards the window, opening it up to confront these innocent partygoers. Stitches knocks over the table and the crowd runs away. Everyone rushes outside of the house when suddenly Kate is knocked out by Stitches' extendable arm. Tommy rushes over to help, but he's grabbed by the killer clown who tries drowning him in the sink. Tommy grabs a bottle of detergent and sprays it onto Stitches that stops the clown in its tracks. Kate wakes up to see the two fighting, throwing a knife straight into the killer's face. They run out of the house, realizing that the clown is still alive, taking these bicycles and riding as fast as they can. Okay, Tommy, Kate, and Vinny are the last party goers standing for Tommy's 10 year old birthday party, so there's nothing that stands between them and the killer clown now. They've also severed the injured stitches, and they've only been able to stop him momentarily, which means that even decapitating him might not help him buying Tommy more time. The only thing that has sort of thrown stitches off was shooting detergent into his mouth, and there's only so much detergent in the one bottle that Tommy has. That means that Tommy and Kate have no choice but to try to destroy Stitch's egg at this point. The two don't necessarily know what the significance of the egg is, other than it was used during the clown cult ceremony after Stitch's death, which means that it could hold some attachment to his ability to rise from the dead. Destroying the egg would have been a good way to get rid of Stitch's from the start, but who would have known clowns could be reborn as demons all because of a little painted egg? Breaking the egg should be as easy as making an omelet, but just to make sure that none of the clowns are able to bring Stitch's back a second time, I would destroy all the eggs at the same time, wiping out the entire clown cult in a one foul swoop. The clowns were able to bring Stitch's back the first time, and who's to say that they won't want to bring back another one of their own again if given the opportunity. To destroy the eggs as quickly as possible, Kate and Tommy should grab an object like a tree branch and use it like a bat to push multiple eggs off of their placeholders at a time. If the eggs crack but don't break when they hit the ground, I would then stomp on them for good measure. There are tons of these eggs, so to make sure I'm not stopped by stitches before I can destroy them, I would make sure to find his egg first and break it before any other. The other clowns don't know and aren't after me, so they won't know that their eggs have been destroyed until it is too late. Just to be totally sure that Stitches will never rise from the dead again. After breaking his egg, I would also burn Stitch's body and place Celtic shield knots in his gravesite. Stitches physically rose from the dead, and desecrating his body could prevent him from rising again. Vampire hunters would not only drive a stake through the heart of those that were presumed to be vampires, but would also decapitate them to make sure the body would never rise again. Using a similar tactic with Stitches wouldn't hurt in this situation. Tommy tells her that they're going to the graveyard in order to break Stitch's egg. If they can break it, they can kill him once and for all. They spot the killer clown chasing them from behind as he pulls at his knife, slashing at Tommy's seat. Exhausted, Stitches decides to get off the kitty bike and chase them on foot. They arrive at the graveyard and realize that the gate is locked, jumping over the large wall while Stitches here tiptoes over them on a small cable. Running through the graveyard, they enter the opened gate and head to the crypt. Suddenly, Stitches appears from behind and they hide behind a gravestone. The two keep quiet as the man makes his run the cemetery and searches for them. 
That's when Tommy hiccups, alerting the killer clown to their location. He keeps on hiccuping with no way to stop. Kay decides to kiss him in order to stop the noise. Tommy peeks over the gravestone and with the coast clear, they walk over to the crypt to find it locked. He manages to break it open with a rock, telling Kay to go inside while he stands guard. The girl tells him to go instead since she's never been there, and he runs inside, finding dozens of eggs lined up on the walls. Searching around the place, he finds Stitch's egg on the top shelf. Tommy climbs up to grab it, but he slips, falling onto the ground and scatters all of the eggs. Spotting the one he's looking for, he recalls how to open a jar when suddenly he's punched in the face and taken outside. Stitches points a knife in their faces, deciding who to kill first. The anxious kid spots his friend Vinny in the distance and suggests they flip a coin. Stitches accepts his idea while Vinny here ties the clown's shoelaces together without him knowing. Tommy flips the coin onto the man's face and he falls over. The killer clown's nose bounces off his egg, but Tommy then pushes his face into the egg and breaks it. The survivors look at Stitches, who realizes that his time is over, and Stitches explodes as an egg-like liquid pours out of every hole in his body. Six months later, Tommy has moved houses and is now dating his new girlfriend, Kate. They're happy that the nightmare is over, or so they think. Back in the crypt, the clown cult leader puts Stitch's egg back together until it magically reforms, meaning he might come back for Tommy's next birthday and will give a show that's to die for. But what do you think? How would you beat Stitches? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the Hounds of Bee playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.